Uh, welcome to this uh, PowerPoint on, uh, just turn my pen on, excuse me, on uh, the uh, sign tests that we have for what are called non parametric statistics. Now, with a lot of statistics, you uh, have to assume certain information. It might be that it's a binomial distribution, it might be that it's a normal distribution. Um, and, and in assuming that, you have, effectively the assumptions can be valid or can be not be valid but inherently in those assumptions is the possibility that you might be wrong your assumptions might not have been valid and therefore your results that you end up getting from a, a test for instance that you choose to do might be invalid so statisticians over the years have tried to come up with ways to do the same thing but without making those same assumptions and these tests that they uh, came up with are called non-parametric tests uh, and they try to assume very very little about the data um, and you'll see in this example we're going to do in a bit um, this the assumption makes is simply that um, the you know the median is in the middle of a set of data which of course is the definition of a uh, of the median so let's have a look at what i mean by this and um, perhaps then it'll make more sense now first of all i've got a little starter because this is going to come in useful in a bit it says the discrete random variable x has a binomial distribution so i've just talked about not liking binomial distributions and then suddenly i'm doing one but let's write this down anyway so it says x is binomial so let's write that down and what's it say n is 70 and you, you should remember you write you tend to write n comma p so that's what i'm doing here i'm just showing the distribution as we should know how to write it and it says determine the probabilities that uh, x equals not now i could use a formula or i could simply use the calculator uh, and i'm going to use the calculator and um, you, you basically have to go to your calculator. Now, if you've got the Casio class whiz, then you'll do menu set, uh, uh, seven um, and uh, go to the uh, binomial um, PDF, this one. Um, and the, I'm look, present looking at a different calculator. It's a, uh, they want the Texas calculator, Texas TI-84+. And in this calculator, I have to press uh, second function distribution and then go up to binomial pdf so basically it's the same thing and that's why the example would like you to write this notation because all different calculators are slightly different in terms of the calculator notation they use on on the on the calculator so anyway so this one i'm going to do binomial pdf so what i'm not going to just go to it anyway um number of times i'm doing n is 70 p it says is uh, 0 0.05 my x value is zero and it's come up with an answer of 0 0.0275 i'm not surprised it's very low um because to get none you'd expect to get some five percent of them you'd expect to get so um 0 0.027 is that seven six i've got a slight dodgy calculator here so it looks like a six um and the next one of course we use binomial cdf instead the uh, cumulative distribution function, uh, some calculators it says binomial CD on the class with, for instance. And so this one again is at the same the uh, number of times I'm doing it 70.05 and then it's less than or equal to one. And the great thing about the CD button is it does less than or equals. And so this time I've got 0.129. So pretty easy, just chuck it into a calculator, let the calculator do the work. A second test is set up with a random variable x now b 104. I'm no, oh, sorry, I'm doing 140 times. Oh, I see, it's exactly the same thing. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, but just twice as often. Find the probability that x is. Oh, this is interesting. Look, when I did it 70 times, it's how many, what's the probability of getting one or less? Now, the next question is if I do it twice as many times, what's the probability of? getting twice as many i.e two or less so it's still binomial pdf uh cdf sorry so let's go back to that binomial cdf um i'm doing 140 times you kind of think i don't know what you're doing it twice as often you're um well, you think it'd be roughly the same actually i think you know you're asking what's the chances of getting twice as many if i do it twice as often this is what the probability is to come up oh, oh right now that is actually quite low a lot lower in fact 0 0.02687 so 269 
So it's much lower. It's much lower than the 0 0.129 I had just now um, from before. Even though I did it 70 times, it's probability of getting one or less. Do it 140 times, two or less. So um, from before. So I think and compare it, I would say it's, it's lower than I thought it would be. As it said, much lower as N rises. Um, so there you go interesting now look the single sample sign test will use the binomial distribution and we're going to use it because the basic idea of this is look imagine i've got a hypothesis that a bunch of numbers has a median of five and um, my alternative hypothesis might be that it's not five it might be greater than five or less than five i might have a one or two tail test and if that is true that the median is five you'd expect if i did some numbers I'd expect, because the median is meant to be in the middle, I'd expect to get, you know, there's five in the middle, I'd expect to get a bunch of numbers lower than five, a bunch of numbers uh, more than five. And I suppose if the median is in the middle, if five is the correct guess for the median, I'd get the same numbers either side of the magic number five. Um, so we're going to use the binomial distribution to test this hypothesis. Let me just turn my board around here. Um, we're going to use the binomial distribution to test this hypothesis. Um, and again, just notice what it says. We expect half the values should be above the median and the other half should be below the median, which seems reasonable. And we basically, all we do is look at the sign of each value. Uh, we don't care how much more than five it is. If it's 5.1, in our mind, it's above. If it was 5 billion, it would still be above. Obviously, that's a slight downfall of this process, but that's the way it works. We're just really counting how many above, how many below. So let's look at this example. It says, test the following data at the 10% significance level to see if the median has changed, doesn't give me an indication how, from 120. Is it above or below 120? Look, And essentially, look, I've got five numbers which presumably I've got for some <laughs> somewhere, which have, I'm, I'm now going to test to see whether or not they're significantly above 120 to um, make me think, oh, it seems as if it has changed or maybe it hasn't changed. So the first of all, I need to set out this properly. I need to have a, a set of hypotheses. My null hypothesis is simply written median equals 120. And when I say it's simply written on my example, the OCR example, which is what I tend to teach. Um, we always just write median equals, but I've seen other examples where you have to write the proper Greek letter. Um, it seems to be something like that. Or something. Um, but as I say, on OCR, we don't need it. So median here is, uh, it says change, so it doesn't imply a direction of change. So I just tend to write a, a two-tailed test. It's not equal to 120. Now, what I need to do is I need to go through the five numbers they've given me and decide whether these numbers are above or below the numbers that I expected. Now, I expected 120, and this is above, I put a plus. 123, oh, it's only a little bit above, but it is just about above. 188, miles above. 149, miles above. 112, below. So when I've done this, I've got four above, one below. Now, the question is, is four above, one below enough um, above what I would expect. Now remember five numbers I'd expect to get two and a half below, two and a half above, but you can't get two and a half numbers. So by definition it's going to be a three two split at best. Is four and one enough difference? And what we do is we basically set up a binomial addition. X is binomial. We had five numbers. Notice I don't care about the 120 now, it's just above or below. And the whole point about this is the probability of these being above or below, if 120 is right and it is the median, then there should be half of them above and half below. Now, what I want you to say to yourself here is always look at this lower number. Theoretically, I could look at the number of aboves or the number of belows. Always look at the belows because it's the easier one to do on the calculator. Um, so I'm going to now look at the probability when I do this of getting, now it's always a tail because binomial hypothesis tests are always a tail. Yeah, effectively, we could have got anywhere between 0 and 5, as, as I've kind of hinted that I kind of expected to get 2.5. Um, you know, that's the mean I would have expected out of my 0 to 5. And I actually ended up only getting 1 below. And you meant to go away from the mean. You can see from 1 downwards. So that's why it's less than or equal to. So let's have a look at that probability. Let's do it now. So binomial C, uh, CDF again, and uh, I did it five times. 
probability now is 0.5. My x value is 1. And my probability when I've done that is 0.1875. Now look, that is quite a high probability. Um, the, the rule set up here is I it was 10%. But it's 10% and it's two tail. So this is a two tail test. So really I've got to compare this. I'm going to write 0 0.1875 is a lot more than 5% because because it's two tail, it's 5% each end. And we have basically simply half the 10. So therefore, I'm again, I'm not going to reject H0. Um, I'm going to write that as do not reject H0. And again, other examples expect you to write different things. Some expect you to write accept H1 instead. Um, and the OCR board want you to write do not reject H0. And then there's a wordy bit, which basically is probably coming, going to come with my answer here. Um, insufficient evidence to conclude that the median has changed from 120. So new question then, uh, this time it says test the following data at the 10% significance level to see if the median is below 50. Right, so I start off broadly the same way, H0 median equals 50. Being lazy now, um, probably would write it out if I was in the exam. And median is lower than 50. So this time it's a one tail test, it's still at the 10% significance level. How many above or below? This one's below, below 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 and only one above again so actually oh that must be why it says here this here um i've got um six below and one above now it's a bit weird i'm even though the question is about how many below that probability of um six below will be the same as the probability of one above and it's much easier to do the one above so i'm going to um, just write out the binomial distribution, make sure I get the mark for that. I'm doing it seven times. My chance of success is a half. And I'm going to find the probability that x, and again, it's less than or equal to one again, because it goes from naught to seven. And I only got one. So I want that. So let's do that on my calculator. And it is binomial CDF again. I'm doing it seven times, 0.51, and I've got an answer of 0 0.0625. Now, it's a one tail test, so I'm going to write 0 0.0625. Now, this is lower than 10%, and because it's lower than 10%, I'm going to reject H0. Whenever you get a smaller probability than the significance level, you reject H0. And again, there's going to be a wordy bit. Uh, sufficient evidence, not insufficient. That some there is enough evidence to conclude that the median is below 50. Now I've got one more question for you. We've got Arthur, and this time he thinks the median running time in 2015 is 106, and he thinks that's higher. He thinks, oh, he thinks 2010 was um, was was uh, higher. So I'm going to say H0 then, we're going to assume that the median is equal to 106. And our alternative hypothesis is that the median, well, let's just get this right round. He says 2010 had a higher, and these were, so this must be greater than 106. Now let's just have a quick look then. How many of these are greater than 106? Or well, I suppose I should also say there's 12 of them. The chance of them being higher or lower should be a half. Now, it's a one tail test, I think. So this is above, what is it, 106, above, below. Above, above, below. Um, above, don't you, just below, 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 above, above. So how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven above. We've got seven above. We've got five below. So we need to find the uh, probability that x is less than or equal to 5. Remember, always pick the lower one. You do that on your calculator, you get 0 0.387. And 0 0.387 is a 10% significance level. This is much greater than 10%. So we should do not reject H0. Now, I took this do not reject H0. I took this from a different exam board, the AQA exam board. Now, the AQA say it slightly differently from memory. Yeah, they say accept H0. We say do not uh, reject H0, same thing, and notice the word a bit at the end. Now look, there's three examples. In class we will do exercise 4A. Um, thank you very much.